Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guides for APT. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the updated object browser. Um, it's been given a big overhaul for version 4.40 and while the actual functionality hasn't changed much, uh, the information provided to the user has been greatly increased and it's going to make planning sessions and setting up your imaging much, much easier. So let's get in and have a look at it. Now the object browser in APT can be accessed several ways and how you access it will determine what it does. If you go to your gear tab and select point craft, it has two places you can get to the object browser, here at the top for the initial plate solve and in the go to plus plus. And these two operate on an individual basis. If you select an object through the object browser, it will only fill in the details for the RA and deck directly next to where that one is. And it's the same with the go to plus plus, it'll only fill in this box down here. So that's if you access it that way. If you access it any other way, like through the uh, uh, telescope controls here on your gear tab, or through the object calculator down here, um, or you use Alt O, it does a different thing. Uh, if you select an object and it has a size, it will fill the size in here for your uh, object calculator and give you a circle on your screen showing the size. Uh, and on your gear tab, it will fill in the RA and deck for your go to. And on the camera tab, it will fill in the object name. So that's if you select it using any of those methods. So I'm just going to use Alt O. And here is the object browser, uh, recently updated. Um, and there's a little bit to go through. The functionality remains the same, but what you get for the user is a great lot of help. So I'll just go through this here. Um, the first thing up here, this new one, is your number of objects. And this is the number of objects in the list that's displayed in here. Uh, it takes into account any filters you might have set or anything else. Um, what I'm going to do at the moment is I'm going to set some filters. I'm going to go to the uh, extended list at the moment. So as you'll see up the top here, the number of objects will change because I've selected the extended list. It'll change to 21,254. I'm pretty sure it will, uh, despite the fact saying 53 down the bottom here. Uh, the big problem with the extended list and the changes that have been made, it does take a little bit of extra time to uh, load up if you've got a slow computer like this one. Okay, so that's that one, and rather than working through the top and discussing all this yet, the first thing I'm going to talk about are your filters, because these are where some big changes will help. The filter type hasn't changed, it's still the same, uh, but what has changed is um, your visibility filters. There's two new ones added. Uh, you've got the current alt, which is you know shows an objects that are above a current altitude only, um, and then you've got visible tonight, and this is a list of objects, if I enable that filter, these are objects that tonight will get above the horizon. They may not be imageable, you know, they might get only a couple of degrees above the horizon, but um, that's what uh, will be uh, visible above the horizon tonight. And it's going through there, so that's, I've got 15,493 objects in that list that are visible tonight. And probably the most important one now is the imageable tonight. So I'm going to click on that, uh, it'll drop the list down more. So these are things that, what the imageable tonight is, a new setting in your location is your uh, air mass limit. And these are objects that get above your air mass limit for tonight. So it's, it's different than using, uh, it's similar to using the altitude filters, except it doesn't rely on where they currently are, it's where they are during tonight. Uh, be, between, you know, um, deep sky darkness time and astro twilight or depending on what settings you've got it's anything that's going to be above your air mass limit during that time so that's what that new filter does and this is very handy for planning and getting set up and ready to go um, so now I'll go up here of course you've got your object names up here I'll see my object list has gone down to 8661 objects I could image tonight yes <laughs> busy night but uh, you have your object name you know, M1s or NGC's or whatever uh, common names or other names they're known as um, the type of object they are the constellation uh, the RA and deck their magnitude if known 
their size in arc minutes and uh, pixels so you can see what they'd be on your sensor and then you have the new all the new columns so you have the current altitude so a negative means these ones are still below the horizon at this time but they will get above uh, my air mass limit which is 30 degrees at the moment uh, so they get up there tonight um, your air mass limit up and this is the time that they reach the air mass limit that you have set um, so that's what time they get above that limit uh, your transit time so the time it passes the meridian uh, and this is these bottom two is to deal with your imaging time um, the MIT is your maximum imaging time so if you started imaging at the first minute you could till the last minute that's the maximum you can get uh, and the imaging time left is if you start this after the maximum imaging time has started after they pass your AML limit um, then this will just be the remaining time left you have to image it before it gets back to your uh, air mass limit so this is the time that it's going to be dark and in the sky between 30 degrees up and 30 degrees down so that comes in quite handy for knowing how much time you've got to image something you now i've got 54 minutes on this one here uh barely enough but others i've got you know the full night basically is six hours and four minutes of dark so that's you know just handy for planning you know how much time you've got left and what your maximum can be now i'll go back up the top here and into your search box now the search box you can either use just a part of a number a full number so you don't need to use the ngc you can just use part of the number and it will go through and find any that have that uh, you could use part of the common name um, i'm going to look for something interesting i'll go thors so i'm just going to put in thors um, i'm glad i got the extended list going on this because thors isn't in the normal list uh, i'll just put thor actually and then you hit search uh, so it's gone to sombrero there's some must be something in there to do with thaws somewhere um, so i'm not going to use that one because it's not what i wanted i hit next and there we go it's found thaws helmet for me and that's what it's got there so you've got all your data here um, your normal data actually i might go back to something a bit more common uh, i'll go to the crab nebula up here because i want to do a little bit more so down here you've got more information on it uh, a lot of it's the same as what's up the top here but you've added things like the distance in uh, thousands of light year um, you've got the current altitude so up here it only shows uh, sorry you've got your current altitudes your current azimuth i meant to say you don't have that up there but that comes in handy uh, what times it goes above and below your horizon again the imaging times uh, your air mass what times it gets up and up and and drops below your air mass limit so you'll know exactly when it gets up and when it gets down um, and the transit altitude so this is the highest it'll get in the sky as it passes the meridian so that's just a few extra details you have there and directly under that uh, for some items you have some interesting details this is mainly just for the items that are in the normal list uh, they're not in the extended list uh, a lot of work to write it up for every item, you know, 23 and a half or 21 and a half thousand items. Someone can start typing now, please, uh, to write them all up. But it's just a bit of inter interesting information. Now, in addition to that, if you go to the APT website and the download page, you can download a, a an audio pack. Um, it's about 150 megabytes. You install that, and what it does, it adds uh, audio files for these ones in the in the standard list and it just plays an audio file with a few of these interesting facts and details in it so i'll do the one on the m1 crab nebula just to give you a feel i don't know how well you'll hear this but we'll see how it goes uh, let's try this m1 or the crab nebula is a magnitude 9 supernova remnant in taurus in the early 20th century the analysis of early photographs of the nebula taken several years apart revealed that it was expanding. Tracing the expansion back revealed that the nebula must have become visible on Earth about 900 years ago. So there you go, that's how that works. That just gives you a bit of extra information about this you can listen to. Um, install it and have a listen if you want to. Uh, it's just something interesting to have. Now, that's everything up there. That's, you know, like I said, these new features are, are make it a lot more uh, easy for your planning for a session. Now down the bottom you have your show button and if you hit your show button I'm going to go back to Thor's helmet again um, so I'm on Thor's helmet um, 
so you go to your show button and it will show it in your planetarium if you have one connected so I'm going to hit show and I'll go over to Stellarium and it's below the horizon so you can't see it very well at the moment uh, but there's Thor's helmet for you um, that's all the show button does um, add in to do this is handy as you said you know even with this list it's eight and a half thousand objects if you've got an object you might be imaging occasionally rather than having to search for it uh, you can add it in your to-do list and that's simply clicking on that button now shift clicking on the OK button uh, that copies the coordinates your RA index to your uh, clipboard so you can paste it somewhere else if you need to so that's something that gets handy there I'm not going to click any of the OK button or anything at the moment simply because I need to finish going through all these so that's the uh, new filters and everything for this very handy stuff uh, stars operate pretty much in the same way except they don't have all the filters uh, the extended list is only 338 of them and of course I only show visible stars so you only want to see what's above the horizon so at the moment I have 141 stars I can't see because it's daytime so that's how that one works and again you can search for your stars and everything in here if you want to do that one uh, next is your maps button and this is just a map of a uh, relative um, the, the night sky in your area this is for my southern one um, if you pick a star it can show it on here um, about where it is if you pick one that's right near the uh, equator it will actually could flip over to the other side just so you can get a better view of it um, but generally I ha I'd have no real use for it but uh, that's what it's there for and then you have your custom and to do list. now these two are very very similar um, to your deep sky browser and they are almost identical to themselves just the objects in them are what you decide to have them in now what I use the custom one for is literally custom ones um, I might have two objects that are close together that I want to get both in the same image so I'm in the middle of them so that's not pointing at one object or the other so that's how it, I, I pick it up there um, and I'll put that in my custom list because it's not a direct object